Now, unless you're living under a rock, I'm sure that you've all heard of the new racing show on Netflix called Hyperdrive, a show where drivers from all across the world, professional or street racer, put the pedal down on some never-before-seen stunts in the racing world. These stunts are grueling. You risk crashing, over-revving, slipping, hydro-locking the engine, and a ton of other things that I don't even know because I'm not a mechanic. And sure, these stunts look cool, but how is the show in general? Does it live up to the hype? Or does it fall flat on its face, do a barrel roll on the pavement, and blow up in a heaping pile of turds? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be going over today, so stick around, put your feet up, and enjoy the show. Alright, first things first, the show just came out last week, so I'm sure some people haven't seen it at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to keep this as spoiler free as possible, and try not talk about the rankings. Alright, so how we're gonna judge this is we're gonna split the show into four different parts. The first one's gonna be Risk, the second one is Characters, the third one is Hosts, and the fourth one being Overall Entertainment. So let's get started! The main draw of Hyperdrive is the fact that all of these stunts have never been seen in history, ever. There are multiple different kinds of stunts and obstacles in Hyperdrive, including the Leveler, the Supernova, Lightbox, Walk on Water, this giant hose thing, and several others that have never been seen before on TV. The challenges rank from low risk to actually pretty high. For example, the first stunt is Supernova, which you just do a 180 degree turn in between a bunch of light poles. As far as I can tell, the poles are made of a thin material that at worst would scratch your paint job. A ton of people hit these poles, and their cars seem to drive away without so much as a dent. So we're gonna list that as a low risk stunt. Around the middle of the spectrum, we have the Leveler, a six story hill climb that reacts like a giant seesaw when the car puts weight on it. How it works is the car drives up the ramp, gets as close to the end as possible, brakes, and lets physics take care of the rest. Now, despite it being the most imposing obstacle on the course, the leveler actually seems to be right in the middle of the road in terms of safety. You know, as long as you don't ram into the barricade like some people did. But seriously, it's got blockers all around to catch the car in case of a mishap on the track. That said, there definitely is a higher risk to your car, given that you're coming out of the toughest obstacle in the competition right before it. That's right, the toughest obstacle in the competition is something that we people don't even have credit for creating. I'm talking about Walk on Water, a seemingly simple obstacle that definitely puts a lot of cars at risk. What Walk on Water basically is, is a giant ankle deep plate. Now, you're supposed to follow a course through that and there's little markers to keep you on track. But other than that, you're on your own. The faster you go, the harder it is to see and the more risk there is to getting your engine filled with water and effectively shutting down the motor. This is especially a problem as the whole course is timed and if you go too slow, you're risking getting dropped from the competition. But once the streetcars actually have an advantage here since their design's already made to keep the elements out of the engine bay. For example, Brittany Williams had no problem whatsoever since her 350Z was a converted streetcar, whereas some of the purpose-built race cars, including a driver I won't mention, completely shut down because water got into the engine. This is not an easy fix, and if your engine locks up, you're done. On top of this, if your engine does not shut down, some of the drivers had to deal with excessive steam, and some actually ended up carrying a little window cleaner, just so they could see. All this works together to make it the most dangerous obstacle, not to the driver, but to the car itself. Overall, this show is definitely a risk to both driver and vehicle. As a result, it constantly keeps the viewer on edge, wondering what's going to happen next. Sure, they wouldn't show if somebody died on the show, but what they will show is a non-fatal accident. That said, this show would be nothing without the people behind the wheel. Now, while this is technically considered a reality TV show, none of the stereotypical reality show traits are present. These drivers all seem to really respect one another, and that's actually a breath of fresh air. There's no extra drama, nobody out to get one another, they just love cars and everything to do with them. When they see a guy do something incredible like drifting a Lamborghini, they don't get angry because he's got skill. They cheer because it's just so incredible to watch someone do something like that. They're as much the audience as you and me. On top of that, the show does a great job of fleshing out the characters and showing the backstory. Whether it's a pity party or a feel-good story, everyone gets their moment to shine. Even people like Richard Pettiford, who didn't even make it past the light box. Above all, the stories are extremely inspiring. Not because everyone had a hard upbringing or had to overcome overwhelming odds, but because these people were just that. People. It made you realize that a driver could be anyone that puts their mind to it. It definitely made me immediately look up the cost of a hydraulic e-brake. Now personally, I believe the hosts are probably the show's weakest point. However, that doesn't mean they're not good at their job. Don't get me wrong, the hosts are great. The only problem I really have with them is that their jokes can fall a little flat at times, or sometimes come off as a little forced or cheesy. 
That said, it's obvious that they care immensely for the show itself and really enjoy watching all the drivers put the pedal down and do something absolutely crazy. With all the different stunts that the show has lined up and all the different backgrounds and skills of the drivers, there's never a dull moment with this show. Every single time the track is hot, nobody knows what's going to happen. The best driver in the competition could crash, or maybe someone could do a never before seen stunt. You don't know. You never know what to expect. And that's what keeps the show fresh, and in turn, that's what's going to bring people to watch it. Now, I love drag racing, I love NASCAR, I love all of that kind of stuff. But the weak point of those events is that essentially the cars are doing the same thing every time. Not hyperdrive. It's not just the same circuit over and over again, it changes almost every episode. As far as vehicle entertainment goes, this is easily near top three of the most entertaining competitions to see in your living room. It's fun, it's cinematic, there's no bad acting, and everyone seems like someone you can just meet on the street. Overall, it makes for a very entertaining experience, and it's already become one of my favorite shows that I've ever seen. So, now that we've got all that out of the way, we need to go back to the question, is Hyperdrive worth your time? Yes, 100%. The show is amazing, and here's why. Picture the kids movie Hot Wheels World Race. Now add the neon from Far Cry Blood Dragon. After that, add the same type of people that you see in America Ninja Warrior. This strange but fun combination is what makes up Hyperdrive. There's no inner character drama, the risk is through the roof, the people are personable, and the cars are extremely fast. Above all that, it shows that it's not necessarily what you got, but what you do with it. Going back to Brittany Williams, she did one of the best runs in the qualifiers in what was practically a stock 350Z that only made 270 horsepower. Hyperdrive is definitely a show like no other. Everything about it is unique, and it's just a fun show to watch. You care about the drivers, you want them to win. Nobody sticks out like a sore thumb, and the ones that do start to stick out get immediately hammered down. It's already one of my favorite shows, and I think that anybody watching this show will enjoy it just as much as I did. Thank you so much for watching, I really have a great time making these kinds of videos. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, I really appreciate it. Feel free to go down in the comments, tell me what else you'd like to see. You know, I like to get a little conversation started down there. Also. If you guys remember a video all the way near the beginning of the channel, it was me and Logan were doing some scouting for film spots. Well, that mini street racing movie is officially in the works and I hope you guys really enjoy it, so subscribe if you want to see that in the future. Hope you all have a nice day. Peace.